Where Does It Go? is the story of three young water explorers who travel in a magical ship through the pipes, sewers, and tanks of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. Join them on this special mission to learn the mystery of where pee, poop, and toilet paper go. Meet the water science explorers, Yadira, Paul, and Jessica. These three students are very curious about water and are always ready for an adventure. The water science explorers are at their favorite park discussing what happens to their pee and poop after they flush the toilet. It seems as though everything magically disappears. Yadira has read books, taken notes, and compiled her research and is set to lead the team to explore answers. I always thought pee and poop went down to the sewer and then found its way to the ocean. Funny you should say that, Jessica. Take a look at this photo of an area called Bubbly Creek. Up until the early 1900s, Chicago dumped raw sewage directly into the Chicago River. The water was so polluted that people said a chicken could walk across the surface of the river. In the early 1900s, the MWRD began to examine ways to keep sewage out of the river. In 1923, the first water reclamation plant started cleaning the wastewater before releasing it into the river. Here's the same area of Bubbly Creek today. Much cleaner. What's a water reclamation plant? Let's meet at your house, Yadira, and you can tell us what you learned. Is everyone ready for a trip down the toilet? Yes! If we must. Let's do it! Yadira pushed a button on her magic water bottle. With the touch of its button, the bottle transformed into a magical vehicle that could take the water science explorers anywhere above or below ground and to any time in the past and in the future. Down the toilet! We know from our research that anything we flush down the toilet goes through the plumbing in our homes. The drains from toilets, sinks, washing machines, and dishwashers usually connect to one big pipe that flows away from our homes. Here's the pipe from the kitchen sink. Whoa, looks like someone's running the disposal. Dirty water from your house flows through a pipe to a sewer under your street. In a combined sewer, as we see here, storm water from the street flows into the same sewer. In a separate sewer system, the storm water is discharged directly into the waterways. Our sewers are designed so they always flow downhill. The neighborhood sewer under your street connects to a much larger MWRD intercepting sewer. We're dropping to the intercepting sewer down this drop shaft. We can just float along and see where we end up. There's lots of water flowing through this intercepting sewer. Everyone's home is connected to it, and so are factories, stores, businesses, and office buildings. This water is looking pretty dirty. It's going to be difficult to get it clean. The big intercepting sewers all end up at MWRD water reclamation plants. The MWRD has seven plants that clean the dirty water. We are at the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant, one of the largest in the world. Paul, since you live in the central part of Chicago too, this is where our sewage ends up. Cool. The first step water takes on its journey begins here at the course bar screen. They keep out big stuff like sticks, rocks, and garbage that could damage the pumps in the plant. These are the pumps at the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant. After the bar screen, the plant pumps the water up from the sewer level to the ground. Now, the water can flow downhill through the rest of the plant. Now we go to the aerated grit tank. In the aerated grit tank, air bubbles cause the gravel and sand to sink to the bottom of the tank, where it's scraped away and sent to a landfill. The water then flows to primary settling tanks, where it sits still so that the big pieces in the water settle to the bottom. The bottom of the tanks are angled down so solids funnel into a drain. The water is looking cleaner, but it still needs work. The next step is a tricky one. The real secret to cleaning wastewater is tiny microscopic bugs that love to eat poop. Poop-eating bugs? 
This I have to see. I thought microbes made you sick. Bad microbes can make you sick. But not all microbes are bad. <laughs> Wastewater arrives at the water reclamation plants with good microbes already in it. But lots more bugs are needed to clean the water. Air pumped into the tank helps the good bacteria grow and multiply. How does air help microbes? It's like your aquarium at home. Fish need oxygen to breathe with their gills. That's why the fish tank has air bubbles. Aeration tanks are kind of like giant aquariums for good microbes. Other good microbes eat larger solids and bacteria by sucking them into their head. After the microbes have eaten all the poop and are happy and tired, they are moved to a final settling tank where they can rest. They clump together and sink to the bottom of the tank, leaving clean water at the top of the tank. The water is looking better and better, isn't it? Microbes are the stars of the wastewater treatment problem. Thanks to them, we end up with clean water that can be released into the Chicago Sanitary and Chip Canal. Can you believe that it only takes 12 hours for wastewater to change into clean water? It would take weeks for this transformation to take place in a natural waterway. Basically, what you're saying is that Stickney WRP is the speediest poop authority in the world. Hello. Wait a minute. Let's rewind. What happened to all those poop-filled bugs that were removed? The poop-filled bugs, now called solids or sludge, go to an underground tank called a digester, where a different set of microbes make an appearance. These live without oxygen and work all day breaking down the solids to make them nutritious for plants, kill bacteria, and reduce odors. The microbes create gas as they work. The gas rises to the surface where it's collected and used to keep the digester at a perfect temperature for the microbes, nice and warm. The gas is also used to create energy to help cool and heat Stickney water reclamation plant. The sludge is removed from the digesters and sent to a machine that spins like a washing machine to pull water out of it. After they're dried and treated, the solids are called biosolids and can be used to help crops grow on farmland. If the biosolids will be used in places where people may touch them, like a garden or a park, they go through more processing. Biosolids are a wonderful food for soil in the parks, recreational facilities, and athletic fields. Wow! I had no idea our poop gives soil superpowers. After the water science explorers finish their tour of Stickney, they push the button on their magical reusable water bottle for a final stop at Ping Tom Memorial Park on the Chicago River. Animals rely on our waterways for food, shelter, and reproduction. The MWRD's work to improve water quality has brought over 70 species of fish into the Chicago area waterways. I admit, that was fun. I'm happy they found a way to clean our stinky sewage. Otherwise, people or animals wouldn't be able to enjoy the waterways. The Chicago River and other local waterways are a lot cleaner, but there's more work to be done. Heavy rain makes things complicated, since a lot more water mixes with the wastewater, and it all takes longer to clean. Well, thank you, Yadira, for the greatest discovery of our exploration. Who knew that the good microbes would find my poop so delicious? <laughs> the friends began to brainstorm their next water adventure.